thank you very much. I'm not sure whether I'm uh, here as a musical interlude between panels or uh, a validator of the previous panel, but I'd, I'd like to talk uh, a bit about um, a living example, I think, of what uh, was discussed in the previous panel, that is the importance of mixed use, the importance of preserving the kinds of buildings that are key to the economic future of the city and the importance really of creating an environment where um, uh, these companies can thrive. Uh, uh, Trinity Church has been the owner of uh, much of the land in Hudson Square. That's Hudson Square that's in relief there. That's the area between Canal Street on the south and um, uh, Houston Street on the north and Sixth Avenue on the east and uh, Greenwich Street and Hudson River on the west. For more than 300 years now, it owns 40% of the property in the area. Um, it is a long-term player. It is not an in-and-out developer. It is uh, an entity that will probably own this land as uh, long as there is a city of New York, and that probably means at least another 300 years. And it has been a leader in uh, the transformation of this area from originally farmland to uh, residential use in the early part of the 19th century to ultimately a manufacturing area uh, dependent on the Hudson River uh, sea trade and then uh, most recently into the 1970s the home of the graphic arts industry before the age of the computer. Um, and then it led the area's transformation and these buildings to commercial use. But for the past seven or so years, Trinity has really been putting its emphasis on where we think, and as you heard from the last panel, and particularly from Jonathan Bowles, um, uh, the future of the city's economy is going and already has arrived. And that is uh, uh, more and more high-tech firms, more and more creative firms, more and more firms that um, uh, require high intellectual value uh, added. Uh, this area here is zone manufacturing. It has very poor retail. It has no residential use. It has no active street life. And for Trinity, for decades, that was not a problem because printers would eat at their printing machines. They weren't interested in going outside. Sometimes they'd bring their lunch to work. But for this new generation of, of tenants, and to attract them and keep them and help them grow, that's not satisfactory. And so Trinity undertook, has undertaken a rezoning of the area with the goals of increasing the appeal of the area to these kinds of firms that are key to the city's future, while at the same time protecting the neighborhood's character, uh, increasing the vibrancy of the area, attracting retail, but most importantly, protecting the kinds of buildings that you've seen, it's disappeared now, but you've seen in, those, uh, in, in that slide, which are really large-scale manufacturing buildings that could never be recreated. And so in doing that, Trinity undertook an unusual rezoning, which is uh, an area-wide rezoning, probably the largest area-wide rezoning, at least in Manhattan's history, undertaken by a private applicant for an area where it does not own the entire uh, district and working closely with the city, but certainly Trinity's application, um, it has proposed an introduction of residential use in the area, but not in buildings that are larger than 70,000 square feet, which are 90% of the buildings in the Hudson Square area. And those buildings, uh, th those buildings can't be converted to residential use, and they can't be demolished unless they are replaced on a one-for-one -one basis with a similar amount of uh, commercial space. So there's a real disincentive to dem demolition. Um, at the same time, Trinity is paying for and providing a school for the new residents. It is uh, working with the city and has worked with the city on design guidelines to assure an active retail uh, 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 design and usage. It is promoting local neighborhood retail. It is working with the Hudson Square bid to transform the streetscape of this area from a gritty manufacturing district to a lively mixed-use district. I think one of the things that we're all learning is that mixed-use districts, unlike 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 100 years ago, where uses were segregated, 
increasingly uses and different kinds of uses now have to be integrated. And uh, this will be a, uh, a, a significant example of that where commercial use is protected but residential use is introduced. At its maximum, when this area is uh, rezoned and built out, the maximum amount of residential use in this area will be 25% of the total space. 75% will be reserved for um, commercial use for creative companies, which will be increasingly attracted here. And I will say on behalf of Trinity that this, as a commercial owner, this is a commercial strategy. It's not a residential strategy and really designed to address all the issues that the previous panel had, uh, had raised and supported. Thank you.